Previously on the bill. You were told to stay away from the school. Look, I'm sorry, Miss Gopher, but until we question Josh, I can't really divulge any information. I don't have any contact with the children. You need to stop going to that school. PC Hollies, I've got an interesting call for you two. Theft from an undertaker's. Someone stolen a 15 grand necklace from a sealed coffin. Mm, sounds intriguing. Oh, I thought it might be up your street, Reg. There you go. Details. Thanks. Thank you. Any unit, Sierra Oscar, deal with male threatening suicide at the factory on Fairgold Road. Informant states that the male is on some kind of platform and is believed to be Josh Carey. Josh? The Sierra Oscar from 87, show me dealing. I know this guy, Lewis. He was a witness to an assault a few weeks ago. The next day, he came to the station, told me he was developing unnatural feelings towards young girls. He'd have thrown a little jump. Lewis, he's never actually acted on those feelings, and he came to me for help. Listen, go to his ex-girlfriend's house for me, will you? Uh, bring her to the scene. Her name's Angela Schofield. Cattle have her address. Sarge. Uh, right. It's this way. I've done what I can to calm things down, but they're pretty emotional in there. Well, you work here, do you? I imagine I will be. Lorna Hart, crime scene examiner. I'm very jealous. Nice to meet you. It's Phil Hunter. You're a bit keen, aren't you? I was just finishing up at a burglary in Lancia Gardens when I heard the shout. I didn't expect to be first on the scene. Have you told them what's happened? Not yet, Mr. Etheridge. I'll just get my gear. My sister died, and these people have robbed her. No, hold on, Mr. Etheridge. There was a necklace when you back coffin with her, and it's not there now. I want to know where it is. Obviously, it's very upsetting for Mr. Etheridge, but it's upsetting for us as well. The only thing you're worried about is that you've been caught. If my aunt hadn't wanted to pay her respects this morning, you'd go away with it, wouldn't you? The coffin would have stayed shut. Refridge, can I ask you to calm down, please? I'm sorry, it's just... It was my sister's dying wish that she was buried with that necklace. Yeah, well, we're going to do our best to try and find it, aren't we? Right, Mr and Mrs Morris. Now, Mr Efridge claims that the necklace was inside the coffin. He's quite right. His sister was definitely wearing it. I put it around her neck on a dresser. And she was still wearing it when I sealed the casket. It was beautiful, wasn't it? Very pretty. Were you aware of its value? Well, Mr. Etheridge told us it was quite expensive. I got the impression he was a little reluctant to have it buried with his sister. Right, have any of your employees seen the necklace? No. You haven't mentioned it to anyone? Absolutely not. No, apart from Derek and myself, the only people who knew about it were the late Miss Etheridge's family. You'd have to ask a brother who they might have told. OK, thanks very much. How long's he been up there, Lewis? He's going to go find out, Sarge. Right, well, backup should be arriving soon. OK. Angela? Yeah? Have you spoken to Josh recently? Uh, he called me about a week ago. First time I'd heard from him since he moved out. And what did you talk about? He said he was finding things hard on his own. Well, and that was it? Yeah. He left a message on my answer machine the day before yesterday, asking me to call him. I didn't get round to it. Well, Listen, I'm going to go speak to him in a moment, OK? Um, if he asked to talk to you on the mobile, how would you feel about that? If it helps? OK, we'll just stand back a minute, OK? Sarge, according to the manager, Josh has been working for the last couple of weeks. Apparently, he keeps himself to himself. He came into work at six, as usual. Disappeared after an hour. Found him up there. Josh, please! Let me just talk to you. <laughs> you are not going to stop me doing this. Angela said you told her that you were feeling lonely, that you had no one to talk to. Is that true? Listen, I thought you were going to get in touch with the counselling organisation I told you about. Yeah, and I went. But that's not the kind of person I am. I can't sit down in front of a total stranger and explain what's going on in my head. You know, I can't talk to someone who doesn't feel the same. Listen, it takes more than one session. These are trained counsellors who understand what it's like for you. It's my fault you're up here. <laughs> Your fault. <laughs> what you told me, Josh, it, it was massive. 
I should have given you time to, to prepare, to work out what you wanted to say to Angela and to your friends. Yeah, so why didn't you? Huh? Josh, listen, please! My daughter goes to the school Angela teaches at. I put two coppers on duty at the school and I told them to arrest you on site. Angela, she's here now. And she says, she says it's okay to talk to her. Will you stay back, Steve? so strong to admit what's wrong with you. Please, don't give up now. But he said it's all right. He said how I am is natural. Who, Josh? Who's telling you this? Oh, this guy. I met him on the net. In a chat room. He said I shouldn't hide from who I am. He says he wants to meet me. He says he can help. I know what that means. I don't want to be like that. I have one person in the whole world who wants to know me. Look what he's offering. What's this man's name, Josh? Paul. Paul Warren. I can help you deal with him, Josh, OK? I can help you do the right thing. And if you can help me put Warren behind bars, well, surely that, that is something worth living for. £15,000 necklace has been stolen from a coffin. Well, I've heard of people being buried with their fake possessions, but that's just ridiculous. Yeah, well, according to Red, she was just an ordinary woman with a nice piece of jewellery. Family heirloom, apparently. I thought the whole point of heirlooms was you're supposed to pass them on and on. You know, from generation to generation. Yeah, well, I suppose it depends how much you like your jewellery and how much you like your family. <laughs> Terry. Yep. Sergeant Wright just talked down a suicide attempt. She's at St. Hughes with him now. Apparently he's got information on a suspected paedophile guy called Paul Warren. Now this guy was just about to jump off a building, so I don't know how much weight his claim holds, but check it out anyway, will you? Let's go. All we know so far is that Josh communicated with Paul Warren in an internet chat room. Terry, for Josh's sake, I'd really like to get a result on this one. Don't worry, we'll sort it out. Where is it? Over here. Right, Josh. I'm Lucy Perkins. I want to talk to you about Paul Warren. Apparently you first had contact with him in the chat room, is that right? Yes. Paul made a comment about liking the younger looking people. I don't know why, but I could just tell there was something behind it, so I responded. I was honest with him. You know, I told him I liked young girls. But, you know, I've, I've never actually done anything. Did Warren tell you anything about himself? <laughs> Not much. He said his, his preference was young boys. That uh, he had a, a, a circle of, of like-minded friends, and did I want to join that group? I see. And what did you say? I said I wasn't sure. That's when he, he told me his name, he gave me his mobile number, said we should meet in person and discuss it further. Did you call him? <laughs> So he doesn't know what you look or sound like, is that right? No. Oh. So you reckon this Josh Carey's on the level? I think he's telling the truth. <clears throat> By the sounds of it, I was trying to lure Josh into his paedophile ring. Do you want to proceed? Well, Warren's given Josh his name and mobile number, suggested they meet up. Josh never called him. You want to pretend to be Josh and arrange a meeting? If I'm right, and Warren is trying to recruit Josh, then the next thing he'll do is offer him an incentive like child porn, website addresses, possibly even the names and addresses of kids he's got access to. And if that's the case, then... OK. Let's do it.
Right. Uh, fine, yeah, I'll find it. Though. Um, me, I'm um, heavy set, hair cropped short. How about you? Okay. Yeah, I'll see you then. Bye. Warren's agreed to a meet? Yeah. <clears throat> Footbridge over Canley Market, 11.30. 11.30? Doesn't give us too long. I'll call technical, get you wired up. This is D.I. Manson. I need a wire for D.C. Perkins as soon as possible. I'm in my office. Okay, thanks, Mr. Morris. Thank you. Any luck? Those catches weren't fastened properly. There's no sign the window was forced, but traces of dirt and debris there suggest that someone climbed in from outside. Probably a man going from the size of the shoe print. I found similar traces in the passageway and a significant amount around the coffin that contained the late Ms. Etheridge. Where is she, by the way? I'm transferred her to another coffin. There's no sign the thief went anywhere else in the building. I'd say he let himself in, got what he came for, went straight out again. I'm done here now. I'll get back to the office, get the evidence examined. I'll see you back at the Nick. Okay, thanks. At the window out the back there was the thief's point of entry. Were you aware that it had been left open? We never opened it. Well, it was open now. Well, that doesn't make sense. I can't even remember when anyone last went in there. Mr. Etheridge did. At the end of last week, when he came to view his sister, he needed a few moments to compose himself afterwards. You were with the Benson family. All right. All right, well, thanks. Um, I'll be in touch. Looks like the brother's in the frame. Right, one of the neighbours over the back here says she saw a bloke hanging around a few nights ago. There's no description. Do you think she'll be looking at the brother? Mm. Huh. He's the one who reported it. Well, he didn't have much choice because he was forced to open the casket this morning. Some old aunt that wanted to pay her last respects. So what are we going to do? Forget the rest of the employees? Well, Mr and Mrs Morris seem adamant that no one else would have known about that necklace. Right. We'll run the names of all the employees through the computer, see if anybody's got any form. I also think it's worth running a financial check on the employees as well as the Morrises and the Effridges. One day, Phil, you should think about joining CID. <laughs> yeah, I'd like that. And I don't think I could carry off smart casual like Stuart. Right, come on, let's head back to the and see what forensics have come up with. Yeah, I just want to get the number for Richard Etheridge's arm first. Oh, a bit desperate, aren't you? OK. Our aim is for Terry to form some kind of rapport with this poor Warren, and hopefully that will lead to some evidence on him. He's told us he's in his 30s, he's got blonde hair, he's wearing a striped top and a grey blue jacket. There are two poor Warrens in the area with form, but none of them match that description, so we need to tail him, get an index number and an address. I want you two on the opposite side of the road from Terry, keeping a distance between you and him at all times. I'll avoid radio contact unless absolutely necessary, OK? Any questions? No, sir. Terry. Ready? Yep. Let's do it. OK. Hi, Lord, what have we got? We've got Mr. Etheridge's fingerprints all over the outside and the inside at the point of entry. I clear evidence of one of his fingerprints under the lid of the coffin. OK, thanks. You were right. Forensic results point the finger firmly at Richard Etheridge. Cup of tea? <laughs> right, Etheridge's aunt reckons that his relationship with his sister wasn't good. They had a massive falling out about eight years ago, haven't spoken since. So all this apparent concern that he has about his sister and fulfilling her dying wish... Is a load of old codswallop. Yeah. I think we should arrest Richard Etheridge. I think you're absolutely right. And I'll get Phil to search his place. So tell us about your relationship with your sister, Richard. How were things between the pair of you? Fine. What are you insinuating? Well, I just heard that you weren't the best of friends. In fact, I heard you hadn't spoken for nine or eight years. What if we haven't? That just sort of changes things, doesn't it? And your big concern about Paula being buried with a necklace just seems a little bit false now, doesn't it? Where's the necklace, Richard? I didn't take it. I've no idea where it's gone. Oh, come on! You broke into the funeral parlour. Your prints are all over the place. On the window, even on the other side of the coffin from where you lifted it up. I mean, that is just about as low as anyone can go. Look, let me tell you what happened, all right? We know what happened. You've got most of it right, but not all of it. I wasn't happy about the necklace being buried with Paula, I admit that. Fifteen grand wouldn't go amiss right now in my life. So what did the two of you fall out about? She took offence at my continual interference. I, 
I, I wanted her to settle down, get married. I tried to set her up with my friends, but... She resented it. I just wanted to help, but she cut me out of her life. Which is why she didn't leave me the necklace. So, you left the back window open, and you let yourself back in later. And then you open the coffin. And there she was, just lying there. But the damn necklace wasn't there, man. I'm telling you, I couldn't believe it. it. Must have taken me 20 minutes to undo all the screws and lift off the lid, and... After all that, it wasn't there. Then what did you do? Wasn't much I could do. I put the lid back on. Did up all the screws and got out of there. <laughs> and I nearly thought about calling you lot to report it had been stolen, but I wasn't sure how I'd explain it. Joe, that was FIU. Our initial check showed that Etheridge's finances are fine. There I could bet I have some debt, about ten grand's worth. So a bit of extra money would be handy. People don't need debt to steal, though, do they? Greed's a strong enough motive. Now they're sending over the Morris's account details now. So. Uh, excuse me? Reg and I have already been through that list of employees for previous. You know, I'm just making sure. Oh. Well, I'm glad you've still got some faith in us. So listen, do you think Etheridge could be telling the truth? Well, I don't know. As mad as his story is, I can't help believing him. Mm, I know what you mean. He did break in, though. He did open the coffin. He stole everything. But did he steal the necklace? We don't know that. Well, I'll tell you, if it was in that house, we couldn't find it. Could have sold it already, though. Listen, you two should check the local jewellers and pawn shops. We'll get something to eat first, then we'll go in. You know that black pudding? I've got all some cans in. Hey, you find that necklace, Paul Rutherford's funeral can go ahead today. Or do you want me to tell the family that they'll have to postpone it because they're a bit peckish? In the meantime, we should ask the Morrises to come in. In pool. Josh. Yeah. Let's walk, yeah? What changed your mind? Calling me. Gave my number a few days ago, then silence until today. I'll take it you're having second thoughts. I see what you mean. Um It's all a bit new to me, really. Uh, I know how people feel about this, you know, it doesn't go down too well, does it? Listen. There are a lot of bigots out there, believe me. They don't understand things properly. They get scared by people who are a bit different to them. So what have you got? Any images, anything like that? Oh, um, no. As I say, I'm new to this. Well, I can let you have some. Normally I'd expect something in return. Well, you want me to pay? I can no, pay. No, 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 no. How it works is, the first one's on me, yeah? Normally, if I give you some images, you give me some back another time. Oh, well, there are other ways you can contribute. Anyone you think might enjoy getting involved, being photographed. Nephews, cousins. Just have a think about who you know, yeah? Why are you doing this for me? Because I know what it's like, Josh. When you come to terms with what you taste are. And from my point of view, it doesn't hurt to make a new contact. Expand the circle. Have you got a pen? This is a website. It's a sort of chat room thing. Look for this boy, Daniel Phillips. He's got a web camera. He's about 12 years old. Likes to play truant from school. Log in. Pretend you're a girl, same age as him. Perhaps a bit older. He's at that experimental age, if you know what I mean. Flirt a little bit and well. I'm sure you'll find him very obliging. He usually is. How did you find this boy? Friend of a friend. Let me put it like that. It's good to meet you, Josh. Yeah. I'll email you. Okay. Oh yeah, nice guy. Mm. Zero scope five warrant is 
get hand into a car, we're going to hand over to the next unit to follow by a car, and I'll do a PNC check on the index ASAP. Steve, thanks, Lewis. Hopefully he'll stick to his word and send some images through. Well, although we can nick him for that later, right now I think we should concentrate on the boy. Paul said that Daniel was a friend of a friend. I suppose he could be connected to another member of Warren's paedophile ring. I imagine they're grooming him. Somehow reassuring him that it's OK to do what he does on the internet, you know? Yeah, well, I want proof that Daniel's definitely been taking advantage of it. I think we should do what Warren suggested. Maybe we should pretend to be someone his own age. Sit up and meet. Bring the scumbag down that way. Right. How are you doing? Psychiatrist says I can go home. I've been referred to see him on a weekly basis. Maybe it'll be different this time. Maybe you'll find this person easier to talk to. Maybe. Listen, I came to tell you that DC Perk is met with Paul Warren. It was early days yet, but we are investigating him. I'm glad. Josh, you did a good thing. We could get an arrest from this. I know. It just it doesn't feel as though anything's changed. Oh, I'm still here. The same problems are waiting for me when I get home. And I still hate my life. I hate who I am. PNC check on the car driven by Paul Warren shows that it was registered to a Michael Bryan at 13 Hilton Road, which was the address that our officers followed Paul Warren to. So Paul Warren is Mike O'Brien? Looks like it, yeah. Checked him out. He's clean. Okay. Daniel signed into the chat room about five minutes ago. Are you logged in? Yep. That's Stacy. Suits you? Well, I asked him to join me in a private chat room, but he hasn't replied yet. However, here we go. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Daniel. How are you? I'm good. You new here. First time. A virgin. God. They don't waste time, do they, kids today? Yeah. Looks like it. Will you look after me? Of course. Why did you pick me? Mutual friend recommended you. Who? That would be telling. She said you were worth a look. I'd like to see you. Can I see you as well? Don't have a camera. I think we lost him. What do you think? Is that better? <sighs> Much better. Friend was right about you. I'm glad you're pleased. You can see some more if you like. No, that's enough. That's enough. Sorry, parents are back. Would like to see more, though. Can we meet? Yeah, we can meet in half an hour. By the bird stall in Candy Market. Is that okay for you? Great. See you then. Better go and meet this kid. Fifteen minutes late. How do you think it's going to show? I don't know. Give a few more minutes. There he is, there he is. Daniel? Yeah? I'm DC Perkins from Sun Hill. It's oh, oh, okay. oh, oh, it's all right. All right. Look, Detective Inspector Neil Manson. You're expecting to meet a girl here, is that right? Someone called Stacy? It's all right, mate. I'm not going to arrest you. 
Yeah, I was going to meet her here. How did you know? Because that was me you were talking to in the chat room. There is no one called Stacey. I don't understand. Have I done something wrong? No, not at all. But I think we should go and talk to your mum. What do you need to talk to her for? Look, she's not going to be angry with you. But it's a little bit more complicated than meeting a girl, all right? OK. Oh, is out right here. Come on. So it was Etheridge that broke in. And all the fuss he caused this morning. Well, he claims he didn't take the necklace. He claims it had already gone. So until we can prove otherwise, we have to investigate that. Can we just go over things one more time? You've already told us that you closed the coffin on Friday night after Mr. Etheridge had viewed his sister's body, yeah? And when I closed it, she was wearing the necklace. I mean, I'd absolutely swear to that. And could anyone else have entered the Chapel of Rest between Friday night and Sunday morning? No, no one's there on Saturdays. We're the only people who have keys, and as far as we're concerned, the premises were locked and secure. Apart from the window, Mr. Etheridge deliberately opened. And neither of you went in there? No, I went shopping in the West End and well, he went to a football match. Look, if you believe we took the necklace, feel free to search the place and our home. Whatever you want. OK, thanks. So what are we supposed to find here? A pile of jewellery they've taken from the dearly departed. Mr Morris said we could search the house, so we may as well cover all angles, Sarge. Oh, look at this. <laughs> New techniques in embalming. Love letters <laughs> to Derek. How sweet. I assume they're from Bev. We could be together always. All my love, Paula. Paula, not Paula Etheridge, surely. Can't be correct. I thought Richard said that she never had a bloke. That's why they fell out, because he kept hassling her about it. Hello? Hi, Dixie Martin. So, uh, Reggie, I think I've got something. Hi, Reg. Well, it's a bit of a result, actually. I've been looking into Bev and Derek's account details to see how they got into so much debt. Now, over the past year, significant amounts of money have been paid into a local private hospital. Which one of them's ill? Oh, well, that's where it gets interesting. I phoned the hospital, and the medical bills have been for Paula Etheridge. OK, Reg, thanks very much. Bye. You know what? I think these letters are from Paula Etheridge. Everything OK? Well, perhaps we should start by saying we're sorry for your loss. My loss? I don't understand. Paula Etheridge? Did Bev know you were paying for Paula's cancer treatment? No. But how... We've seen your company accounts, Derek. Does Bev know yet? No. Do you have to tell her? Well, that all rather depends on what you tell us. Well... I met Paula about ten years ago. Me and Bev were on holiday in France with a couple of friends. Skiing trip. I twisted my ankle on the second day, so I spent most of the holiday round the hotel. Paula had been dragged along by her mates. She wasn't really into it, so we ended up getting to know each other. Right, so you started an affair? I don't think either of us really understood how it happened. I mean, I loved my wife. I still do, I suppose, but Paula, well, Paula was different. Yeah, Mr. Morris, did you take the necklace from the coffin to recoup the money you'd spent on her treatment? No. Or was it simply something to remember her by, to go with the letters that you've got? Letters? I, I haven't got any letters from her. Well, at least not anymore. Well, you have. We found them in a box in a bedroom upstairs. But they can't be. I threw them out. Well, then I think Bev has found them and kept them. Then she knows. 
she knows about me and Paula. Which means she had a motive to take the necklace. Detective Inspector Neil Manson, this is DC Terry Perkins. Thanks for coming in. What's going on? You're going in. Is Daniel okay? Yes, fine. I'll see Mrs. Phillips. But we do think he may have got in with some bad company. Mrs. Phillips, I take it you know Daniel's got a computer. Of course, his dad gave it to him. Right. Are you aware what he uses it for? Why? What's he done? We've been made aware today that Daniel's been visiting chat rooms. And via the webcam in his bedroom, he's been... But he hasn't got a webcam. Has he? Mrs Phillips, Daniel's been undressing on the internet. What? Why would he do that? Because he believes he's doing it for girls his own age. You see, our bigger concern is the girls that Daniel thinks he's shown himself to are actually grown men using false login names. You mean paedophiles? Do you recognise this man? That's Mike. Mike O'Brien. How will you describe your relationship with him? He was a friend of my husband's. When we got divorced, he was very supportive. You're not suggesting Mike's got anything to do with Daniel's behaviour, are you? I can assure you he hasn't. Earlier today, we were given information on a man we suspect is an active paedophile. We think that man is Michael Bryan. Don't believe it. When we met Mr. O'Brien today, as well as offering us pornographic images of children, he directed us to a chat room that Daniel uses, suggested we use false login names. We believe that Mike O'Brien has groomed Daniel, convinced him that it's okay to behave the way he does on the internet. When? Surely I'd know if Mike was spending time with Daniel. Mike probably bought him the camera. It's not your fault you weren't to know. But we need you to help us to find out from Daniel exactly what's been going on. did you? No, Mrs. Morris. All we found were some letters. What have you done, Bev? No worse than anything you've done to me, Derek. Right, well, we need to speak to you, Mrs. Morris, at the station. Okay. Why'd you keep the letters, Bev? I thought he might need them one day. If ever he had the guts to ask for a divorce and we ended up in court. Yeah, instead, you're going to end up in court for a different reason. Now, you told Derek you were going shopping, let yourself into the chapel of rest while he was at the football, right? Derek has forked out thousands of pounds of our money on her hospital treatment. I didn't see why she should take to the grave something that would repay a debt. But don't you have a duty to respect the wishes of the dead? For anyone else, of course. Not for that woman. Not after ten years of turning a blind eye to her letters and her phone calls. So this wasn't just about money, it was also about revenge. It's the first time we've ever had a request to view a body on the morning of the funeral. I tried to put them off. I almost managed to persuade the aunt it was a bad idea, but... Well, now I understand why Mr Etheridge was so insistent. Miss Etheridge's funeral was scheduled to take place in just over an hour and it still could if you tell us where we can find that necklace. Now, we've looked in your office, we've looked in your house. Yeah, yeah, OK. I'll tell you where it is. You all right? So sorry, Mum. Oh, don't worry. You've not done anything wrong. Just tell these guys everything you know, OK? So, Daniel, when we told your mum that you had a webcam, she was a bit surprised. You want to tell us how that came about? 
Mike gave it to me. He's a friend of Mum's. Why did Mike want you to have a webcam? To find a girlfriend. He, he said he thought I was old enough to have sex. What? He said you wouldn't understand. He said you'd think I was too young. Did Mike tell you how to behave with a girl? He said that I should be confident about myself. He said that's why I'd never had a girlfriend before. Because I was too shy. What else did he say? Did he give you any advice on what to do in front of the camera? He said that if anybody asked to see my body, I should. And that I'd be more likely to get a girlfriend if I showed them what I looked like. Daniel, has Mike ever asked you to take your clothes off in front of him? Of course not. Why would he do that? No reason. OK, thanks very much. You've been very helpful. Is that it? That's it. Take down your home in a bit, but we need to go and arrest Mike. Do you know where we might find him? Probably at his place. We were meant to be going away together. You and Mike were going away together? The three of us. We were meant to be going on a boat trip. I was just packing when you called me down here. We were going to meet at his place and drive to the boat yard together. Which one? The two anchors, Bankside Pier. Okay. Let's get onto uniform. We need to get to Mike's place right now. Terry, do you want to check that garage? Yeah. Okay. What's that, Joe? What we got? Nothing. Got a sign of him in here, sir. Nothing, sir. Class one. Let's get down to the boatyard. He might have gone there early. I want you to check DVDs, CDs, magazines, books. We're looking for illegal images and any evidence of child abuse. Tear this place apart. Sarge, I just found a load of pics of him with kids at the park, at the beach. He's smiling in all of them. It makes me feel sick. You got anything? No. Look, try that one. It's disgusting. Looks like a glam, Sarge. Yeah, he's probably on his way to Calais by now. I'll let the DI know. No. Oh, no. There you go. So Mrs. Morrison was charged. What about her husband? Well, no, because he didn't actually know anything about the theft. There is something you ought to know, sir. We found some letters. They were from Paula to Derek Morris. It seems they were having an affair. And they had been for ten years. Paula? Mm. Yeah, they met on a ski holiday. They were very much in love, and it was Derek who was paying her medical bills. No wonder she didn't appreciate my interference. Thank you. Just in time, the funeral's at 4.30. Oh. I'll just make sure this gets buried with her, just as she wanted. I'll see you out, Mr. Refuge. Good result, lads. I still think it's a weight burying that necklace with her. Yeah, 15,000 pounds, I believe on that one. Finally agreeing on something, I don't believe it. <coughs> Can you imagine the amount of suits you could buy for that? I mean, Stuart could sort himself out with some decent knitwear. That's him over there.
What's this about? Daniel, website. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, you did this morning, didn't you? Should we have a little chat about it? Do you want to stay there and we'll talk about it? I don't know what you're talking about. Just stay where you are. I'll cut him off. Stay where you are! Mike, stay where you are! Right, this way. I'll take the other side. You know we've got you. Pretending to be Josh Kelly. That's entrapment. We've got your computer. We know what's on it. Come on, Nick. Man. Now, would you prefer Michael Bryan or Paul Warren? Mr. O'Brien, do you know Daniel Phillips and his mother Tanya? They're good friends of mine, yes. In his statement, Daniel said that you'd been encouraging him to meet friends on the internet. He also said that um, you bought him his webcam. He's a mixed up kid. We all are at that age, aren't we? I tried to help him. You tried to help him? By introducing paedophiles to him online. By grooming him to take his clothes off. Obviously his mother didn't know about that, did she? Because you told Daniel it was your little secret. I'm sorry, has Daniel told you that I threatened him? I don't think so. I just took an interest in him, that's all, which is more than anybody else ever did. You're the ones poisoning kids' minds, terrifying them about some danger that doesn't exist. Oh, it does exist. Unfortunately. The benefit of the tape, I'm now showing Mr. O'Brien exhibit DC1. That's a picture of a boy aged about 10. Did you download this image to your computer? I don't remember. I certainly didn't take it. The expression, the eyes. They look dead, don't they? That's just a question of interpretation. This boy probably sits at home every night, reliving what he went through. Doesn't that affect you at all? That's your view. I don't subscribe to it. What about Daniel? Are you saying that you haven't done him any harm? I love that kid. The other one's harming and making him some kind of pervert. Daniel and I are just friends. He confided in me. I wasn't sure about his sexual orientation. His life was a mess. I took care of him when his mum couldn't cope. Where's the harm in that? Mr. O'Brien, we have found thousands of images just like this one on your computer and our technician is still going, so you can deny it all you like. We've got so much evidence against you, we're going to be looking at sending you down for a very long time. Oh, I heard it's looking like we've got him. Yeah, we found thousands of images of underage kids. I'd say it was more than enough to get Michael O'Brien sent down. He's denying grooming Daniel, of course, but I'm confident the CPS should have enough to charge him. There is, however, something else which is cause for concern. What's that? O'Brien's last email was to Josh. After the operation, when Terry pretended to be Josh, he sent him some images. Obviously, he wanted to make sure he was hooked. What, uh, and the images of the kids? Mm. Very explicit. If Josh has opened any of those emails, well, he implicates himself in the whole thing. It could be very serious. See in a bit. Yeah. The same Josh was in this morning. I don't know what, what this will do to him. Make you slow down, will you? Look, if he's opened that attachment and looked at those images, this could ruin him. I know you feel responsible for Josh, but you can't be to blame if he opened those images that O'Brien sent. Yes, but I can be to blame for him being vulnerable to O'Brien. OK, look, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go with you and we'll go and see if he's all right, OK? Look, Josh. I think I'd better give you this. Warren's just sent me an email. From what he said in it, I think I know what's attached. I'll take this one and get it processed. Uh, you didn't want to look at the attachment? No. Bartme did. Curiosity. I want to know how I'd react. But that's not the way. I've got to keep looking forward. And uh, you think you can do that over the next 
A few days, a few weeks? I don't know, but as long as I do the right thing today, then that's enough. I'll deal with tomorrow when it comes. Um, sounds like the sound approach to me. Thanks. Next time on The Bill. We have to keep Martin on side. If we lose him, Raymond walks. I know exactly who you are and what you're capable of. You'd better retract your witness statement. You testify and you're dead.